Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be diving into this week's astrological forecast starting August 19th until August 25th. Now, there are a lot of planets that are currently retrograde right now, and what I love to do is take a few steps back before I dive into all of what it is that we can expect for the week ahead. Why? Because this helps us to prep and understand the energy that we are currently in at this moment in time. Not only are we going to be diving into the astrological forecast, pulling up the astrology charts, but I do have my tarot decks on my left side. And we're going to be shuffling and diving into that information as well. There is a new format. I'm sure that if you are an old subscriber to the YouTube channel, you're noticing that I am trying to feel the vibe and trying to upgrade my system when it comes to recording, talking to you guys, hanging out with you guys every week. So with that being said, I will, you will see the chart pulled up on the camera so that you can follow along. You will also be able to see me shuffling live. However, I decided, which is not the smartest thing as an astrologer, but I decided to do all of this during Mercury Retrograde. And on top of that, I am literally the worst when it comes to technology. So hopefully this works. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but I'm also staying really patient and open to the process, whatever it will look like. So bear with me. If it doesn't come out perfect this week, at least we tried. We're going to try again next week and keep trying it out until we have it all figured out. But fingers crossed, we've got it officially this time. So that's a mouthful. Let me not waste any more of your time. There's just simply too much to talk about. Let's go ahead and get cozy, get comfy, get something to drink. I've got some green tea here and let's go ahead and dive right in. So, like I said, the astrological forecast for this week is August 19th through August 25th. There are five planets that are currently retrograde to start the energy of this week off. And this is where we want to begin. We want to begin not at the beginning, but what led us into where it is that we are here today. The first thing is Mercury is currently retrograde in the sign of Leo. This is going to be in full effect also, Pluto is retrograde in the sign of Aquarius, Saturn is retrograde in the sign of Pisces, Neptune is retrograde in the sign of Pisces, and Chiron is retrograde in the sign of Aries. Instead of me breaking down all of these energies again, try to revisit last week's video and the week before that. You'll be able to see me kind of breaking down more specifically in detail. If I did it again, I would be like a broken record saying the same thing again and again. Having said that, Today is Monday. That's the time that is that I'm filming, August 19th. We have the new moon that's happening in the sign of Aquarius. Now, on my right, I have the chart pulled up. It's interesting because Aquarius energy always, always wants us to detach. Not to dissociate, but to detach from the outcome. To be able to detach from the outcome and to loosen our grip on what the future holds, it allows the energy of these planets to flow more fluidly and more naturally, more organically than us trying to control and manipulate the outcome and how things are inevitably going to pan out. There are some things that we can influence because as spiritual beings, we have the power to show up to set intention or to insert ourselves in in the current moment to kind of make it match what we want for ourselves and then there's other things especially now with so many planets retrograde and the way that these major planets are sitting specifically uranus transiting through taurus that we cannot control or contain what is inevitably going to happen with that we have to give ourselves a lot of grace we can feel what it is that we're feeling whether it be excitement for the surprises because uranus does uh, connect us immediately to the element of surprise and Uranus rules the energy of Aquarius, which this new moon falls into. We can feel pleasantly surprised. Other times we can be stunned by the changes that are happening, especially when they're rocking areas of our lives <clears throat> that connect us to structure, support, and the things that it is that we value to our core. 
with this Aquarius new moon, I really, really am big on setting intention. I would encourage you to continue to set intention if that's something that you like to do, if that's something that you vibe with, for exactly when you sit with yourself, exactly what is that you see for your future. Aquarius loves to focus on the future, but still will give us a lot of uh, twists and turns. It doesn't, again, attach to the outcome. So try to have this vision or allow yourself to be open to the vision of what your life can look like and what your life will hold while also be open to the element of surprise. So one thing that I encourage you to set intention for is to set intention for grace and flexibility and fluidity and to be open and optimistic to what can happen and to even give you peace if that's something that you're struggling with now. I did look back at the comments from last week's video and the week before that. Um, as you guys know, I've been taking a lot more time lately to kind of sit and go through every single one of the comments and respond to you guys as much as possible. And I've been noticing that these planets lately are creating a lot of extremes. Not only does this register, not only does it make sense, not only is this something that I've been seeing and predicting when I come and I talk to you guys, talking about like, listen, there's going to be so much extremes and what it is that we're seeing around us, but you're reporting back the same thing that it is that I'm seeing as I'm pulling the charts. And thank goodness for the tarot, intuition, and divine guidance, we're able to kind of navigate through it. However, some of you guys are feeling a little burnt out and frustrated because these <clears throat> planets are challenging you in great, great ways. There's moments where people, there's like half of the population is on top of the world right now. Like they're just vibing, whether they are, regardless of their sun, moon, or rising, because it's not always exactly what it is that you would expect it to be. Like if you are an earth sign and you just happen to be thriving in, um, you know, with this Aquarian energy or with Uranus transit through Taurus, um, it, it doesn't matter. You know, everyone is, everyone has a different outcome, but it tends to be in different, it tends to be in extremes right now. So with that, for those of you guys that are feeling a little frustrated and stunted, I hear you, I feel you. Remember that astrology is helping to explain the energy that is around us now. It helps us to understand why we don't always contribute to how things unfold in our lives, but we are still empowered to do the research and to prep and plan and to stay open and flexible regardless. That I wanted to say that before I went even further with the astrological charts because some of you guys are like, you know, we're getting rocked or I turn on the news and there's always something. Yes, because the astrological charts are definitely reflecting that. Having said that, right, there's a reason why I'm saying that, partly because it's, you know, YouTube, but the other part is because Aquarius connects us to the idea of humanity. Remember that when we are in our own world and our own body and our own mind and our own heart, sometimes we can feel alone and detached in the way that makes us feel isolated or vulnerable. So with this new moon, I actually want to encourage you guys to set intention for connection and to to not only set intention for things that is that you want within your life, but for the peace and the security of humanity as a whole, because it's not just us individually that are going through these seasons and these cycles, but humanity as, as a whole. Um, also, the future, the future for all of us, right? It's like, it, there's a, a question mark, not in a negative way, but it's almost like, where is technology and where is this path kind of leading us? Uranus and Aquarius energy, for the most part, loves to keep us surprised and loves to keep us on the edge of our seat. This is why we don't attach ourselves to the outcome. This is why the word detachment is so strongly connected to the energy of Aquarius. It's because Aquarius energy has this ability to go along for the ride and to actually enjoy the freedom that the ride brings because it doesn't like to be stuck 
and stuffy and stagnant or you know stayed put in any one spot for 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 too long it does crave adventure exploration and it does have this strong act of service without needing to have ritual and routine and structure so try to embody this energy in your everyday life and you are going to find yourself more like more receptive and more and less reactive to the to what is happening around you and that can be tough if you are a cardinal sign if you're an earth sign it can be you might be stuck in your ways and kind of wanting things to be steadfast and a sure thing and you want to know and plan and predict for the future this is not something these are not times where we can plan for the future but what we can do is set intention what we can do is put our influence out there, like our voice out there to the universe and say, listen, I am struggling with detaching from the outcome. I, when I look into the future, I don't know what I'm seeing and it gives me anxiety. Or when I look into the future, I don't know what it holds. Be honest with yourself and what it is that you feel. Being detached doesn't mean that you're not feeling anything. It just means that you're honest with your feelings and you're not attached to the outcome you're, you're open for the ride, or at least knowing that it's a, a good time to be open for the ride. I will do a full reading breakdown about the Aquarius new moon. It will be an extended reading, so I will link that down below. I'm going to record it after I'm done talking to you guys. But for now, let's go ahead and move forward. The next thing that is really standing out to me this week is the same time that we have the new moon in Aquarius on Monday, which is going to be exact 2.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are also facing Mercury retrograde and Mercury almost, almost conjunct the sun. Basically what happens, that almost makes a huge difference. If it was an exact conjunction, this is when the energy of the sun and Mercury are exalted in a line, they're conjoined, they're vibing, they're on the same page, but they're not, it's almost exact. And basically what happens is that the sun, being the brightest star in our solar system and where the rest of the planets m migrate around, whether they're moving in forward motion or retrograde motion, the sun's rays are very, very hot. That is a lot of heat coming from the center of our universe. And guess what happens to Mercury? It gets burnt up. And not only does Mercury get burnt up, but Mercury is currently retrograde right now. So communication and this feeling of burnt is of, of this, this vibe of feeling burnt is going to be an energy that we're going to feel all throughout the entirety of this week. This means that there's going to be words that are lost. Our tongues are tied. Wires are crossed. Miscommunication. There may be feelings of being misheard, misread, details lost, items lost, technology just connecting when you're trying to talk to your friends on, on YouTube about what's going on in their lives and you're doing it during a time when Mercury's retrograde and you're just like, why did I choose today? Because again, detaching from the outcome, you do the best that you can, you hope for the best, you set intention and you be open to, to learn, to pivot, but not having, like having a backup plan or having a plan B or C just in case, again, those wires get crossed. And I don't know if you guys are picking up what I'm putting down, putting down, but I'm talking about myself right now. <laughs> I'm really trying to give uh, grace to the whole technology process. And I'm actually doing better than I usually, because I used to get so frustrated. Like Virgo, I'm a Virgo for those of you guys that know triple Virgo here. When I have an idea, a plan of how I want something to go, how I want it to execute it, there's no more debate on it. I've thought it through and through, and I know exactly what I see. I know exactly what I want. And any type of minor detail or nuance is a distraction and just really agitates me and frustrates me. So through life and through growth, honey, <laughs> um, and even remembering that I too am under this umbrella of energy, practicing detachment is uh, very important, a very important reminder. So shout out to me. <laughs> and shout out to you for being patient with me and also with these energies as a whole. Just pay attention though, going back to the chart, just pay attention to communication here. So again, um, 
people are doing the best. And I said this, I said this last week, it kept showing up in the uh, readings that I was, I was doing for my clients. Also, Bahati Love Notes, for those of you guys that were subscribed, this energy kept showing up that, say, that kept saying people are doing the best that they can. And also, the second message was most people are just trying to survive. When you remember that, it kind of allows you to connect with humanity a little deeper, which we could really use now more than ever. It really helps us to connect with humanity. And remember that... You know, it's not just me out here. It's not just you out here. And to, it kind of will hopefully, when you put that into perspective, remember that everybody is going through different extremes within their life. Or if it's not one great extreme, it could be many different extremes that are happening in different areas of their life. And they're just trying to navigate through all of it. So give grace. That is actually my tip for us to share with you guys as we're migrating through the astrological chart is to make no assumptions of others or or even ask for clarity practice patience practice kindness those are things that sound so simple but it's a thing that is overlooked and i don't know if you guys are feeling this it has a lot to do with what's going on astrologically especially pluto and the first degrees of aquarius saturn in the middle of pisces neptune at the very end of pisces both of those three planets are retrograde, Chiron retrograde in the sign of Aries. There's a sense of like agitation and frustration, especially, I don't know if you guys are notice, noticing this on the internet, thankfully. I've been not getting as much heat, but if you go on any type, I don't know if you guys are not, noticing this, let me know down in the comments, but any type of post, whether it's someone sharing something that they're eating or someone sharing a hobby that they do, um, my algorithm has switched from like pets and cats and dogs, like funny videos and cows and chickens to like babies now because she is um, preparing for motherhood right now. So random. But it's like the, 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 the vibe really shifted from people being so open and kind and considerate of each other's feelings and different ways of lives to like everybody being judgy and judge, judgmental. Like, have you noticed that? Especially when it comes to social media, you read it, you read the comments and there's this, some type of like entertainment with people that people get with like beating each other up it's so weird um this is something too that it's like you can see it within the astrological charts especially social media this is something that i talked about that like where is social media going to go like where how is social media turning it's going to be an interest, interesting direction and it's little things like that like the culture the overall chemistry how much it changed that's going to be contributing to the uh, the outcome of what is that is a, we can expect of again humanity but social media too because social media reflects humanity at this moment in time so bringing it back full circle you guys know i'm long-winded practice the patience and the kindness it sounds so simple but it does go a long way and oftentimes it's overlooked I also want to tell you guys deep breaths because people can feel the energy is off within you just like you can sense when the vibe is off, right? When someone senses that you are tense, when you are agitated, when you are frustrated, it puts them on edge always without a doubt. It's like animals. We too have an animalistic nature where we can sense when something is off. This is going to help disarmor the situation instead of create this environment that continues to be very very reactive reactive the other thing is like with retrogrades right oftentimes people are like retreat 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 if you feel hermetic during the retrograde motion of any one of these planets but definitely mercury retrograde by all means follow that feeling of self-care and disconnection it's 2 22 p.m eastern standard time on the clock right there for those of you guys that have been seeing repeating numbers have you been seeing repeating numbers by the way i have 808 and 818 has been like a common thing for me. I've been seeing it nonstop. If you guys have been seeing repeating numbers, let me know down in the comments, random. But um, but what was I talking about? I totally, I totally, oh, retreating. So yeah, if you are feeling hermetic and feeling like pulling away for a second or for time, for the time being, by all means, but I, as tempting as it is, for the majority of you, unless you're feeling guided to, I don't want to encourage any of us to retreat and to go into hermit mode. In fact, this is a wonderful time to explore, to express, 
to get out there, to be colorful, to be bold, and to be unapologetically you. Asking for you for what you want, asking for what your needs are, just putting it all out there. This has a lot to do with the fact that it is, for now, the time being, because a little later on in the week, the sun is going to transit into Virgo, and it's going to be Virgo season. We'll talk about that a little further. But Mercury is also transiting retrograde through Leo, teaching us how to find our voice, to bring color and light into our lives, and to be, again, unapologetic with who we are and exactly what it is that we want and see for ourselves. As tempting as it is, to retreat, to avoid conflict, or to avoid the potential of you making a mistake, which is human, don't do that. Try to be open to the process of being imperfect and even offending someone, not on purpose, but knowing that you have the skills, the resources to rub a few people the wrong way and then fix it if needed. This doesn't mean that you are an agent of chaos and you're just out here disrupting peace for the sake of you don't even care? No, that's not what it is that I'm saying. I'm just saying like if you're watching Mercury retrograde and you're looking on the internet and there's all of these different sources and voices telling you to retreat, to avoid, and that Mercury retrograde is happening and these retrograde planets are happening and things are breaking down and communication is misfiring, that's not an, an invitation. It shouldn't be an invitation for you to back away and stop living your life. If anything, you know what to expect, you know what can happen, and you looking at the astrology charts and hanging out here with me here on my channel, you know that this is a moment to empower yourself further and to not retreat into fear. A lot of the internet right now is fear-based or anxiety-inducing or angry or frustrated right now. It's representing the, the change that's happening within society. You can be an example to stretch and extend grace to others as well as yourself, to be that shining light that is that you are, and to represent this, this community as a whole, what we are about, which is being authentic, standing in our truth, giving grace to others, giving grace to ourselves, showing up, showing out, learning, growing, listening, doing, participating, evolving, sharing, connecting. That's what we're about. So don't use this really kind of tune down the voices of the outside world and um you know give yourself ample ample room to move and to be curious and flex and practice flexibility and trust again how the the events are going to unfold this is going to create a ripple effect again for not only for yourself and your own peace of mind but for the betterment of humanity as a whole and it does go that deep the next thing, again, that I was talking to you guys about is Mercury, again, retrograde in the sign of Leo is very, very expressive. But on the 19th, we have Venus squaring off with Jupiter. Now, I love this. I love this. I love this because Mercury is so expressive and so, I don't say loud, but like needs to be seen and heard and demonstrate it's very demonstrative right it's not like a quiet energy when venus squares off with jupiter i'm already and i think a lot of you guys are going to be feeling this as well your thoughts may you may find that they've already started to drift to beauty or money rituals um things that you used to like or love that would give you value that felt like they gave you value that you may have taken a break from for you, it's going to start to feel like it's worth it to spend that money on those things because it makes you feel better. It is what it is. Some of you guys may actually be feeling called to splurge. Venus squares um, Jupiter, even with Mercury retrograde. I recommend this for those of you guys that it's not something that's going to create any type of extreme buyer's remorse. If you are someone who is in consignment shopping, this is a wonderful time for you to go out and to find some really awesome, beautiful, striking staples for your collection. Mercury retrograde has a tendency to bring things back from the past. And even Venus squaring off with Jupiter can create this little edge of friction that brings abundance and physical gifts into your life. And that money or the value, the aesthetic value, or both, seems to have some type of worth for you. Um, also, there is this theme lately, right, of personal goal setting 
or fitness, think of it like, you know, when it's like the new year and everybody's like new year, new me, they're setting these goals for ways to make us feel better, look better, and even raise our vibration. Just like the new year, and there's a whole reason why I've explained it on my YouTube channel of like why a lot of new year resolutions don't last for the majority, like 99.9% .9 of the population. There's an astrological explanation for that. But just like how those goals don't last um, for the whole year, don't expect your goals that you're setting for yourself during this week, even though you feel that push, that pull, don't expect them to last forever. Meaning don't expect them to last to for, for it to be something that is consistently something that is showing up in your life or that you're doing longer than five, five to six weeks. Why? Because again, a lot of these planets are currently retrograde, specifically Mercury retrograde. And although you feel this shift, this push, this pull to go get your nails done, you know, switch up your look a little bit um, or to get back into the gym or walking or whatever it is that you're doing, which a lot of you guys are using this time with uh, Mars transiting through Gemini to get out, to sign up for new memberships, to, to do different classes, all different types. I was talking about, uh, what is it? The um, Mind Body class app that you, it like helps you save so much money on like the different classes that are available in your community, especially if you live in a large, like a city community or a suburb, there's a lot of different classes that you can explore. I talk about this all the time because I benefit from it, but um, it's like, I'll, I'll leave the links down below and a few of you guys actually signed up for the for these classes. Everyone's community is different, so thank you guys too because I, I got 20 classes because of you guys and I've been <laughs> showing up to my local yoga classes too and even doing some of my classes at home or meditation classes. You guys know I'm pregnant currently right now. So we have to give ourselves a lot of grace. But um, anyway, it, you could like one class for like yoga class, like $20 to drop in versus you could pay $20 for four weeks and it you have unlimited access to, to, to classes like yoga classes and you can just drop in throughout the week. You just need to sign up through it on the app. It's called Mind Body. Look it up, but I'll leave it the links down below. And for those of you guys that do subscribe, I do get... Um, credits too, but I highly recommend it. It's the, they, they don't sponsor this video. It just really does benefit me. It benefits all of us. Um, okay. Having said that though, back to these goals, even though they may not necessarily be something that we can consistently find ourselves doing for the remainder of the year and into 2025, it doesn't take away from the value that it is that it holds for us in the moment. There's a reason why we have energy that needs to be burned off. There's a reason why we should be out exploring. There's a reason why we're feeling called to connect with the community or to disconnect from social media and make new friends in different ways and to get out and to explore and to venture because discovering those things and even moment to moment, even if it doesn't last forever, there's value there. It makes us happy in the moment. Okay, so there's to look out for that, especially when it comes to personal care, fitness goals, lifestyle goals, beauty and aesthetic, massages, scalp, those types of things, things that help to reduce uh, tension and stress within the body is going to be very, very beneficial to you and your overall well-being. Okay, rituals, regimens, routines, which speaking of rituals, regimen, and routine, August 22nd is the official start of Virgo season. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. I'm a triple Virgo right now, so this is my season. This is the time, right, where Virgo season begins the 22nd. Mercury also is retrograde. Mercury rules Virgo. It's not going to stop you from feeling that dis that very distinctive, instinctual desire to purge, to buckle down, and to prepare for fall or the harvest. This means that we're taking account of our things. We're inspired to self-improve. Again, it's not going to last forever, but let it last long enough for this season before we enter into Libra season where we're like partnering up, um, compromising, harmonizing, sinking. Virgo season tends to be very busy also. I don't know if you guys are seeing this and little side note, I've been seeing this within my own personal life. The adoption of pets, like small little creatures that help you around the house from cats, dogs, rodents, chickens, ferrets, 
birds, you name it, I'm seeing the adoption of that. Virgo rules those creatures, and Mercury has a retch Mercury has a retrograde. Mercury retrograde has a way of bringing these little creatures back into our lives, um, or the need to care for them, look after them. Again, we've been seeing this in our in our life, where we've had this these uh, two kittens kind of show up in the backyard around the time when there was a hurricane. I don't know if they got displaced. I don't know if they were born a few weeks earlier and then they just ventured out at the time of the hurricane, but they were just so cute and they looked like they were starving. And my partner and I were just like, okay, we can't necessarily bring them in the house. I personally was, I feel very respectful of their freedom right now. And they're also very skittish, especially the mom. Um, but we've been looking out for them. We've been feeling the call, hearing the call. It's not just Virgo season that we're feeling this. It's also the fact that Mercury is retrograde right now. Um, yeah, so I'm just, that's something that we've been, and it, it literally started off so harmless as it always does, where you're just like, oh my gosh, look at this little kitten. I hope that they're good. And then it's like, you leave a little bowl of water and that water turns into a little saucer of, you know, dog food, like wet dog food, because that's what we have here at the house. And then that turns into little cat treats, and then that turned into getting some cat toys, and then that left us only with one option but to build them a little bed on the front porch so that they're comfortable, and then just kind of, it just has been snowballing. So I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I've really been, um, you know, enjoying having their company around the house. I also kind of have like a small homestead here myself. With the chickens and stuff, you guys know and kind of see me kind of putzing around on Queen Queen Bee Homestead, which I have updates for you guys on that in the near future. Um, yeah, so having cats around the house is not a negative thing. Or cats around the yard, the property is good, especially in Florida and especially with chickens and stuff like that. They tend to um, do their job and pay back their little, you know, rent for staying on the property, which we're more than happy to have them with mice control and other type of like lizards and stuff that can, you know, just kind of blow out of, um, blow out of balance. So we didn't name them yet because we also have coyotes in the neighborhood, which is a life, man, life be life in, right? Um, but we've been taking care of them. So let me know if you guys have any tips <laughs> for stray cats. But when I, back in Philly, when I was living in Philadelphia, we heard all the time, don't feed them. Don't take care of them. You know, they create more trouble in the long haul because they'll be like screaming and crying and howling in the backyard. We're not there yet. Um, so I'm kind of going away from my logic and leaning more into my heart with this one for now. If you guys have any tips, I would love to hear them down in the comments. We're not naming them yet and I don't wanna share naming them with the internet because God forbid something happens. I don't want you guys to feel any Type of sadness you know and come back to report I don't feel um, emotionally attached as I would to any of my puppies so anyway guys let's moving let's move forward this is a wonderful time again as Virgo is transiting through the sign I'm sorry as Mercury is going to be transiting through the sign of Virgo even with Mercury retrograde to get your affairs in order from money and spending this has been a, this has been a totally common theme with Uranus transiting through Taurus which by the way buckle up with this transit because on September September 1st Uranus is going to go retrograde and you think things are crazy now when it comes to finances the economy and global events wait till that that's make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because we're going to be in the same plane, there's going to be some turbulence, and I'll be your pilot. We'll get through it together. Okay, so yeah, buckle down with um, your money and your spending, housework, chores, continue to declutter, as many of you guys have been doing and reporting, and also um, the fine print of like business, creation, law, um, development, going back to school, etc. That this is the season you guys are already seeing this. Also, on the 22nd, don't let the internet freak you out. There will be a square between Venus and Mars. This tension is super sexy. I love this type of tension in the air. Instead of you getting like more frustrated and feeling run down by obstacles and blockages, this is a wonderful time for you to challenge yourself to push a little forward with your goals for what it is that you see for yourself instead of getting agitated, especially anytime when Mars in Gemini is involved with this. This is going to be on the 22nd, but we're going to feel it the majority of this week. So... And that's pretty much all of that, you guys. I did promise you that I was going to shuffle 
from the tarot. I do have my deck here. I'm, I was, I didn't realize that it was going to take me so long to break down this energy um, for us. We're about 30 minutes. Yeah, almost 40 minutes into this video and our time together. I don't mind it, but YouTube gets a little weird. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do a full breakdown of the new moon in Aquarius and extended reading. I'm going to be completing that after this video. You'll find the links down for that below. And for those of you guys that really love the additional um, benefit of having shuffling and the tarot and energy and intuition, there is Bahati Love Notes, which is a wonderful... Um, pretty much me shuffling for the collective, a small collective throughout the week, consistently throughout the weeks and months to come. The links for that as well as, as the coupon code will be found down below. But for now, let's go ahead and look into what are the cards for this energy of this week, not including the new moon in Aquarius because there's going to be a whole video for that again in the extended. First thing that's standing out to me is the fact, I don't know if you guys are seeing this, which you should be able to, is the fact that uh, the Queen of Swords is the first card to jump out. So interesting because she's been ruling a lot of, believe it or not, um, what was the discernment has been a huge thing lately, especially with so many planets retrograde, and especially Neptune retrograde in the sign of Pisces. Our intuition and what we're seeing and hearing and how we're processing things, even though that's more Mercury, but like it's the fog that we're in. We have to really rely on our spiritual discernment and strengthening our spiritual discernment. Don't be disappointed or frustrated when things fall through the cracks, especially if you're meeting new friends right now. A lot of people are connecting with new friends and connecting with new energies or connecting with people of the past and almost beating themselves up when they're like, why didn't I see this part of this person? Don't, don't do don't that. Do that. No, There's no need that. for that. It's just, it's just teaching, teaching you how, how to approach everything, everything with intention and discernment. discernment. Like it's always bringing the divine center, for center, center, center focus. focus. Not, just Not just people and energies, but also like, like energies, energies that come off of people, but like, but like things that we involve ourselves in every day. You may have promised yourself something with a business or you may have linked up with someone's project and in the beginning it seemed like a great idea, but now seeing through the fog, you're starting to see the true colors of the situation and your discernment is sharpening up to let you know, listen, a boundary needs to be enforced here or this does not work for me or it's teaching you how to, commu to, com to communicate, which I'm struggling to do right now, to speak up for yourself, to ask for what it is that you want and need, raise percentages, you know, whatever it is. Like these are things that it's teaching you how to have the wisdom that in this temporary moment will teach you long-term Knowledge, knowledge right, right? So, so don't, don't beat, yourself beat yourself up and be like why didn't I know this and of course it's easy for us to say when you know better you do better but when you're actually practicing it do you give yourself that grace if not let's do that today the other thing that I'm seeing here too with the Queen of Swords is the element of detachment making sure that we're not so emotionally and mentally and energetically bound to a specific outcome especially when there's so many shifts that are needed to happen right now I'm also seeing the energy with the Fool card here reverse and the Seven of Pentacles the word that's coming through intuitively is false starts or false promises this doesn't feel like intentional or malicious false starts or people promising things that they can't deliver on. It's just showing you again that the energy is kind of breaking down. We have the emperor here reversed. We have the page of pentacles reversed. We have the page of swords reversed. These are energies that don't have longevity connected to them. Does this mean that we don't try? No, it means that we can give our best, give our best effort. effort and, and oftentimes, oftentimes when, things when things are breaking down like just like cement, cement kind of breaks when when the weather kind of hits it and sand and salt kind of, salt kind of separates the concrete and over time it separates there's an opportunity for there to be growth let that growth be coming from you and the, the queen of swords has the keenness the discernment the 
the vision, the wisdom, the knowledge to know where she should put herself, where she should include herself in the ways that she shouldn't for opportunity for her to advance and for her to level up or for her, her to meet her goals. This means that for some of you guys, there's you have the wisdom and you have the knowledge to say to yourself, this isn't going to work out for me. This may not necessarily be something that you're saying physically out, 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 like, out loud, like loudly that you're demonstrating, but minimal, you are, um, min I got distracted because I was just thinking about, I'm like, can you imagine if I'm doing this whole video right now and the camera's not connecting and you're not able to see the cards? That would really be frustrating, but again, um, it is what it is. We're going to live and learn as we go along. Uh, totally got distracted there. That's my, I don't have ADD. It, it would seem that way. I do get distracted easily, but I don't really claim ADD. Um, I just have a brilliant mind <laughs> as most people <laughs> with ADD or ADHD have. Uh, yeah, fast paced, a lot of information. I'm also mercury ruled, so my brain's just like, <laughs> okay. Um, and also this green tea though, this green tea though. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so, so back, to what, back to what I was saying. saying. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Queen of Swords has this ability to kind of like detach herself and see, okay, I can sense intuitively that that person right there is going to fall. They're just going to fall apart or this person's fucking around. And this is going to create an opportunity for me. So I'm going to put myself in the position where if the cards align, which it looks like they will, I will be the first one to be like, I can help with this and keep the project and the ball rolling if that's something that you wish. Basically, the, the example that is that I'm giving and the metaphor that is that spirit is giving to me to give to you is you can see something coming from a mile away. Part of you can sense it, but also your discernment. You called it in, you set intention for it, and it's embodied within you. And for that reason, you put yourself in a position where you're just like, I saw it, I was prepared. You know, you know we're, ready we're ready to go. Okay, this okay, is going to help you to deal with the pitfalls, the changes, the roller coaster twists and turns instead of being derailed by it by other people, which is so interesting because the next card we have is the King of Pentacles and the King of Cups. These are both masculine energies, regardless of how you identify. They're showing that they are capable, they are present, they are ready, they are accounted for, they have a plan, and they're ready to protect and serve. Regardless, again, of how you identify this energy is going to be embodied within you as well where you're just like i feel secure within my future i am setting intention for security and abundance for my future i do have what it takes i am getting more organized i am my heart is open i am ready i am prepared i do want commitment i do see a future for myself you know you're fully fully aware Having, having said, said that, that it's, interesting it's interesting that the tarot, the tarot is bringing up the sun card reversed, reversed, reversed and, and the devil card reversed. reversed. When, we were, when we were just talking about the fact that um, Mercury is Kazemi. So the sun and Mercury are almost conjunct, almost. Remember that almost, almost is never enough or not enough in the words of Ariana Grande. That applies to the message today. The energy is getting burnt by the, the, the element of the sun and the devil card card is here. Funny that I'm saying this because I just heard the word detox intuitively. Some of you guys may be finding yourself needing to detox or be careful with detoxing. Any type of extreme is not going to be good. This feels a little explosive. When I heard the word detox, I heard it being very explosive. So watch out for your digestive system, which actually makes a lot of sense because Virgo does rule our digestion, our digestive systems. Okay. Um, watch what people say Watch what people don't say. Again, the Queen of Swords is going to speak life into you to give you that extra insight so that you're not getting offended or you're not getting, again, emotionally invested or personally hurt by how energy moves, especially if people are making promises, especially if things don't feel like they're working out. You already saw it coming and you already knew what to expect and you already had a plan B, C, or D, especially with the King of, King of Pentacles and King of Cups. Remember with the word detachment, the last thing I'll say to you guys before I let you go, with the word detachment, we're trying not to take things personally. Everyone is out here trying to survive. Everyone's trying to figure it out. This is not permission for them to use and abuse or to disrespect your boundaries or to overlook you or to, you know, mess with you in any way, shape or form. It just gives you permission and also gives you an explanation for what to expect, how to deal with that energy because you saw it coming and then how to move forward 
advancing regardless of what is happening. Like every single thing here should be working to the betterment and the growth and the positive and outcome for you. Why? Because we hung out today and we talked about it and you, you saw it, girl, you saw it, you saw it coming. So thank you guys all for coming in and hanging out with me for this week's forecast. Hopefully you were able to follow along with the tarot. I may have to change a wire here now that I'm thinking about it, um, but we'll see. If not, I'll just put the photo up. Um, hopefully there's no issues here, but remember that the links for the new moon and Aquarius reading are going to be found down below. Also, so too will be the Bahati Love Notes coupon code. If you do not see any of those links, especially for the Aquari the new moon in Aquarius, make sure that you're following me on Instagram. I post most of all of my upda updates there, as well as BahatiLife.com. BahatiLife.com. That's my apothecary. That's my work. That's my planet. That's my planet Earth, right? Anything that I've got going on is going to be on the website. There's a newsletter there. You can sign up for all the updates as well as look into Bahati Love Notes. Anything that we've got going on, readings, the apothecary, etc., etc. And for those of you guys wondering what deck I'm working with, those links will be found in the description box down below. Until then, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'm sending you all of my love, of course, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.